Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a hardware review, a, a quick hardware review and on a Netgear router it's the WNR2000 version 3 okay now uh, version 3 is a bit of a you know kind of an orphan router uh, for many re for uh, one particular reason uh, it only has three and a half megs of NVRAM where most of them have four uh, where does that matter well if you're gonna uh, load uh, DDWRT uh, it, it's a bit of a, a challenge to do so it's not impossible though impossible though and uh, I'm gonna make a video showing you that but first I want to do a hardware review on it and uh, we'll start with the LEDs uh, as you can see we got power LAN Wi-Fi port 1 2 3 and 4 so it's a four port router um, by four ports we mean four LAN ports two three four uh, they are all uh, 100 megabit uh, so is the uh, uh, WAN uh, port as well okay uh, nice thing about one of the nice things about it it's got an on and off switch which is rare on a router so you don't have to pull a cord out every time you want to turn it on and off um, number two it's got a Wi-Fi on and off uh, button right here so you can turn the Wi-Fi on and off just by hitting the button on top of that uh, it has an, uh, an internal reset button, which is, uh, you know, a, a really useful thing to have. Most of them have it, uh, but basically, there, there's your reset button. Um, so, there's the, it's a black outer case. Uh, it, as you can tell, one of the things, uh, weird things about it is, it's got no external antennas that you can see, okay? So, next thing we're going to do is take it apart. Um, as you can see on the bottom, there's one screw. Sometimes the version 2's have two screws. This is one of the, uh, sorry, version 3's have two screws. This is the one that has only one screw. And it's a Torx uh, screw. So you're going to need a Torx type head. Let me see if we can get... There, there's my Torx. Um, a T6 or a T5 will work. So it's up to you what you have. Uh, you know, even if you're crazy enough, and you don't have either one, maybe you have a small enough flathead screw that will uh, screwdriver that will take it off because it's not on there really tight so we're going to take that screw off there we go and then this cover top cover just lifts off so we'll put it down here and lift the cover off just lifts up okay I'll show you a side view there it is it lifts up and off that way you'd think it'd slide off this way but it doesn't it lifts it, it hooks at it hooks in at the bottom and lifts up this way okay so there we go then you see the PCB PCB board or PC board um, pretty standard stuff nothing really special there but uh, what you need to know to take this thing apart is that it's locking being locked down in several places okay Number one place that's being locked down is right here. Let me bring it up. There's a little tab close to the LEDs, or you know, the front panel. See that? A little tab there that's holding it down. Um, I believe the screw here is holding it a, a bit too, but you just move it out by doing this. Same, same with this. You can just move it out by lifting it that way. I'd start from this corner, which is the bottom front. Uh, and there's two more tabs hold, holding it down here, okay? But you don't fool around with those, basically. You, uh, you leave those, uh, uh, basically, the way this is going to come off is it's going to come off like this, okay? So the next thing you're going to hit when you're trying to take it out is this tab here, the uh, door tab. So you'll see, I'll, I'll take it apart for you here. And I'm just going to use uh, my little Torx uh, driver. You just be careful not to hit anything with it and put it in the back and pry it up. See? As you pry up, you see that this corner comes up first. The reason for it is this tab here is holding it down. So just move it around that tab. Now we're lifting this way, as you can see. That's the front of the unit. And you just lift it up and off. Okay? So here's your hardware, your, your circuit board on the circuit side. And one of the interesting things you're going to notice is these two tabs lifted right up. 
off the board. Well, those are the uh, Wi-Fi antennas. In, they're internal, they're inside the box, but those are Wi-Fi antennas. They actually work pretty good. Now, another thing I noticed, and see if I can get you a view here, you see how it says antenna number four, okay? Well, there's one antenna. There's two antennas. This is also an antenna here. Let's see if I can find the antenna um, where it says antenna. Yes, right there. Antenna number one. And on the circuit board printed right into it is antenna number two. So it actually has four antennas. And it, it, as far as Wi-Fi um, signal goes, it's pretty good. It actually works uh, uh, remarkably well. Um, I haven't had any problem with reception. I actually find the reception on it quite good. Okay. Uh, another thing you need to know here on this board, if you're taking it apart, um, well, here's your reset switch. Uh, here's your Wi-Fi on and off. Here's your uh, WPS button on the front. I forgot to mention that. See that? That's WPS, which is for, you know, basically one button push uh, setup. Uh, we got power. There's your... Uh, power lead inside um, but one thing that some people who are you know going to unbrick this box like if you use WWRT on this and you brick it you're gonna need to get into it through a serial connection and that's right there okay that's your serial connection for this board now I'm not I'm gonna show you how to put uh, uh, update the bio the uh, firmware on this board uh, using the Netgear firmware and then after that I'm probably going to do a video showing you how to put DDWRT onto it uh, which is a special case in this case because uh, the version 3 uh, uh, WNR2000 uh, is very uh, tricky to do that with uh, primarily because it doesn't have uh, uh, the standard 4, four meg of uh, NVRAM it has a little bit less so but there's a workaround on that and I'll show you it okay but there's your hardware now let's put it back together again okay so as you can see your ports are your your data ports are here and that's the part you want to insert first number one you see that you have a, this sticking out so it has to go through the case first and these have to go through the case so be careful with that because you can snap them off if you don't do it right so first part on front um, let me zoom that in a bit for you. And once again, you've got your tabs. You've got to get the board under the tabs, okay? So let's do that. And the board rests on top of these posts here and underneath these tabs. So that's where you have to first go. So. There we go under one tab, there we go under the other tab. That's that. Okay, let me zoom it out. So now I have it underneath these two tabs, as you can see. And the rest of the board just basically at this point just snaps in by being pushed down this way. Right? Now you see this tab is on on holding the board down there. And then over here it's being held down. So there's your board back in. Make sure that you've got it aligned on these little holes here one two three and four um, look at the back make sure your buttons are okay they are in this case and just put the cover back on and again the cover goes in from the front from the top I mean this is the top so you slide it in that way and then go down in the back so let's do that Okay, make sure you're nice and even all the way around, and I am. And last but not least, put your screw back in at the top. And I, this screw is not, not in there very tight, so you don't have to really, it's plastic, you don't have to go crazy on it, you know. It's not like it's going to be vibrated a lot anyway. So let's just put the screw back in. There we go. That's it. Now your machine, your uh, router is back together again. Okay. 
It's a great little router. It's uh, this is the WNR two th uh, two thousand version three, and my next video will sh I'll show you how to update the uh, firmware on this, and uh, a few a few tricks on this router because it's uh, it's kind of cool how it works. All right. Well, thank you for watching.